Hello and welcome. Let's talk about incremental refresh in Dataflow Gen 2. Now, incremental refresh is still in preview, but it was introduced a couple of months ago and I've been playing around with it. So I thought this is a good time to introduce it. Okay, so I am on in, in uh, Dataflow Gen 2 and I have a, I've already created a query. It's a pretty simple uh, query which brings in sales information by order date and update date time is the timestamp when this row was updated. And uh, to set up incremental refresh, all we need to do is right click on the query and select incremental refresh. And I've already set it up, so all you need to do is enable this check mark and there are a few parameters that needs to be filled. Now these parameters are slightly different than what you would do in um, what you would use in uh, Power BI Desktop. So let's just review them. The first one is uh, choose a date or date time column to filter by. So this is used to filter the source data. So in my case, I'm using order data, so it can group all the order data within that for that date together. The second one is extract data from the past, how many months, days, weeks. So what time period does it have to go back to check for this incremental refresh. So based on your use case, maybe you want to do for the past few days or the past few months, maybe you have uh, finance data, which uh, probably changes uh, two to three months. You, you, so you need to go back three months, but before that everything is locked. So you can use that, or maybe there is some sales data which can uh, go back a few days because there are some returns or uh, certain other processes. So based on your use case, you can go back a certain period of time. And uh, so so make sure you pick this based on your use case. Uh, the next one is bucket size. Now what's the bucket size is basically the size of your data. Uh, so you can make the bucket size again based on the time period. It could be day, week, month, quarter, or year. Um, so based on, the, based on your data size, make sure to pick the right bucket size that would work for you. And the last option here is what is your what what field to use to check for any changes in that particular row? In my case, it is update date time. So that gives me uh, the latest uh, updates for a particular row. So I'm selecting that field. And there's also this advanced option. You could use this. Uh, so this option basically states that does it require incremental refresh uh, query to be fully folded? So based on your use case, you can check or uncheck this. So fully folded is basically, does it have to run this query fully in your data source or, or based on what you've done in your applied steps, it might change. So I'll just keep that in mind. All right. So, so that's, uh, so that's, those are all, that's all you need to do set to set up incremental refresh. And once you've set it up, you have this little yellow uh, blue uh, triangle on your query, which indicates it's set up for incremental refresh. Now, one of the key features of Dataflow Gen 2 is its ability to set up a destination uh, for this data once it's processed. Now, once if we have set up incremental refresh, we'll notice that the, the destinations that are available are Warehouse and Azure SQL Database. Lakehouse and Data Explorer are not an option uh, once we set up incremental refresh, at least right now. Uh, again, it's in preview. As of now, that's the use case. Okay, now we have set up the incremental refresh for this data flow. The next thing probably we want to do is put it on a schedule. Now we know that for uh, data flow, the window within which for refresh is every 30 minutes. We cannot set up anything which is less than 30 minutes. Uh, it's, it's every 30 minutes, the, you can set up a scheduled refresh. Now, since we are doing incremental refresh, Maybe our data volume is smaller and we may be able to set up our refresh to happen in a much smaller window. Uh, if we need to do that, then uh, the option would be to use data pipeline. Now I'm in the data pipeline and within the data pipeline, I can use a data flow activity and configure it to execute the incremental data flow which we just created. So once we do that, it provides us the option to schedule this at a, in a much smaller window. So if I need to schedule it, I can schedule it by the minute. I can do it, let's say I want to refresh this data every 15 minutes because my data volume is not too big. I, I can get more close to real time. I could do it 15 minutes, five minutes, or even uh, I can set it up every minute if my data volume is really low. So you can go to as close to real time refresh as you would want with uh, by using a combination of data pipeline 
and data flow with incremental refresh it gives you this tremendous option so the so but of course if you want the other option for near real time or used to use uh, data mirroring, which uh, right now supports uh, just a few data sources. Azure SQL is one of them. So I just wanted to showcase all the different um, options that are available now with uh, with Dataflow Gen 2 having incremental refresh. Hope this video was helpful. And as always, if you've got any questions, obvious.com.